I'm Greg Zanis, and I'd like to talk to you about is it possible to travel at light speed or a half of light speed? And this whole theory of the pyramids reflecting 32 and 64 buildings and making a mega beam, is it possible to travel at light speed? What we're doing here, if you notice this, we're sending all the light from all of the pyramids into one pyramid that's going out into deep space and also it's also reversing the light that it gets and sending it directly back now we're actually making a huge beam where we have 64 pyramids that are making this thing connect and have all the light going to 64 and coming back 128 beams of light Will this be possible for this to go faster and faster and faster? I'd like to show you this painting behind me called the Big Dipper. And if what, if what you see here is every single star, the Big Dipper, has four flying huge pyramids going around it. And the light is coming in the bellies and going to the each of the pyramids. And four and four is eight. And 8 and 8 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3 4, 25, 26, 27, 28. So we're taking 28 times the power of these seven stars and seven suns. And what we're going to do is we're going to send it out into the belly of a pyramid that's leaving into deep space. And it's also going to have a little bit missing, but mostly it's going to send it right back. And this is going to be going back and forth, back and forth, just similar to aiming flashlights at each other, except these are so powerful that you can't look into them. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep sending this thing out and out and out and out and out as we did when we built this, this project here until it, it's going faster and faster and faster and eventually after a couple of weeks it's going to reach half the speed of light and it'll keep going faster and faster and faster we're never going to get to another solar system with friction power alone we're going to need to travel on a light beam and on friction power we're lucky to be able to explore the inner planets of our own solar system better yet going to other star systems and what we're talking about here is that the, the heavens are full of all of these stars and they're just waiting for us to discover them they're waiting for us to to go and look for other planets of course like I said before this being the Big Dipper we may never actually land on a planet we may just start orbiting these different suns with our huge, huge buildings. But the point is that all the buildings have life support systems on them, as we've been showing you. There's units in there that have cattle in them. There's units in there that have sheep in them. There's units in there that have every type of conceivable plant life form. We're going to take all of these along. We're going to try to find a friendly f a planet someplace. If we don't find a, a friendly planet, we're still going to go ahead and land on it over here I've shown you this planet is Mars and it's not a friendly planet at all there's no oxygen there's no layer here there there are uh, gases on Mars but because of that we have to stay sealed inside of our pyramids vice versa this building is floating around the outside of Mars and what we're doing here is we're dismantling it one piece at a time see the B units that are missing here like teeth we're starting to lower those down to the surface of Mars and we're automatically, when they're down there, there's a complete unit for people to live in and we'll start building littler pyramids here and here on Mars from pyramids that we built before until we can finally take our ball coat man and start actually building units on the surface. Right away, we need to build the tunnel system for the dream car to go in between the buildings back and forth so we can start controlling the planet we can go to the North Pole and of course get water and we'll need water to expand our horizons 
Once we get to a planet, even if it's a little bit hostile, and we start building more wedges, we'll also be able to build more pyramid buildings on those planets. Over here again, this painting shows several of the inner planets around our solar system, this being our sun, and this being Mars again. What we're going to do is we're going to start building and more and more and more wedges and more pyramid buildings that uh, another thing about other solar systems is some of them don't have the gravitational pull that our Earth has. So it's going to be a lot easier for us to pull those out into orbit with the bungee cord system. And with, ov over the next two or three centuries, we can be building this project called the Seven Stars, the Seven Stars of the Big Dipper. We can conquer that slowly. And mankind has lived for thousands and thousands of years, but now we're finally going to have the biggest exploration that mankind has ever, ever seen. You know, we explored America, and what did we find over here? We found American Indians. <laughs> we're going to go to other planets. We're probably not going to find any other life form. Another thing is about this entire project is, when we send a beam of light into deep space, this one has no pyramid building on it, We'll be telling everybody or anybody, is there other life out there? Beam us back a light. Because once they see that beam of light, it won't take a lot of brains to figure out that they can send us a beam of light back if there, in fact, is other life. I really don't believe there's any other life other than on Earth here. And I believe that we are the seed that we need to go out and take life beyond this earth, we need to expand our horizons and be open-minded, of course, this is a very futuristic type of a thing. I've been called by architects a modernist, and I've been called by friends the Jules Verne's of today, but what I like to think of myself is just simply somebody that's going to make a mega leap for mankind Mankind is very stuck on this tiny, tiny little planet. And I'll be telling you more about how to travel into other worlds in up and coming videos. So you can also go and see all of these paintings and everything we've talked about in our webpage. Go to our webpage and go to photos. And I'm Greg Zanis talking about light speed theories. And thank you very much.